Now, Richards was coming into view there. The cameras can't quite see it. Well, I think you can speculate pretty pretty safely that Richards has taken a run up the escape road to yep. avoid ploughing well, straight we in. We certainly saw it from our commentary box. We didn't catch it on the camera, but Richards in trouble there. He would have dumped probably the five, ten seconds stationary. Then he's got to build up the race speed again. So I would imagine when they come across the trip at the start finish line, Larry's going to have about 30 seconds on Richards. <laughs> Well, they've left Richards in the number one Winfield car and uh, whilst they were prepared to put uh, Groove Slicks on the car. Listen to the crowd, Gary. Richards radioed ahead and said, no, leave the hot slicks on, which they've done. Well, that's a very dry track out there. You can see that very dry line through a bit of the sheeny, uh, wetter, damper part of the circuit. The crowd's going crazy. They know what's going on. They would have seen Richards spin it at the end of pit straight. So there, Larry continues on his way up the mountain. And we'll just watch this split as Jimmy Richards comes across the start finish line. But <laughs> Perkins, boy, oh boy. Oh, Perkins on his way up Mountain Straight, still waiting for Jim Richards in the number one Winfield Commodore to come across the start and finish line. Larry Perkins crests the rise on Mountain Straight. Jim Richards still not in view. Oh, the gap is stretching. That has cost him a lot of time, that little incident. There he 26 goes. seconds, 26.4 seconds, almost out to 30 seconds. So Larry Perkins, if he can keep this thing on the island, he will just about go close to winning the Tui's 1993. 11 laps to go. Let's go to the pits. Greg Hansford, Larry's co-driver, is with Andy Raymond. Yeah, thanks very much, Gary. Greg, incredible. 26 seconds, the gap, 12 to go. Yeah, it's getting a bit exciting. I've never uh, been this close before. Mate, I don't think I've, anyone's, I've seen anyone jump higher than John Fay when we got the Olympics than you did when Richo spun. Oh, I mean, don't mean to wish him bad luck, but uh, the further he stays behind, the happier I'll be. <laughs> How's the heart pounding? It's going. It's going. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thanks, Andy. Greg Hansford, boy, as he said, he's never been that close in his life before. Car 18 comes into the pits, running in ninth position. We change over the tyres. The weather seems to be holding on. Lap 150, we've got another 11 to go. Forward pit report takes you right in close. New tyres going on. Paul Radisic at the wheel. The bashed and battered shell. Falcon continues in the great race. Was in position nine, rejoins in ninth place, so they haven't lost a spot. Bright uh, day glow orange car. You can see the name plastered across the top of the windscreen. Steve Masterton was quite a peddler a few years back in a Ford Capri under the sponsorship of uh, his dad's outfit, Masterton Holmes. I think actually ran a, a Ford here in the latter days of Group C racing as well, a Falcon. Yeah. And uh, he's back running in uh, two-litre guys, uh, the uh, Ford Sierra. That's interesting, this uh, this setup here. They've converted the uh, former Turbo Sierra, which would have put out somewhere in the region of 550 or 600 brake horsepower. They've removed the turbo so the car can run in its two-litre configuration. And uh, there's certainly a lot of these things sitting around in garages around Australia. I'd imagine a few more guys wanting to get the two-litre might uh, get one of these things. Peter oh, Hill's Oh, Peter Jackson, Nissan, Glenn Seaton, car 30. Hasn't had any uh, Peter Jackson Falcon other than mechanical, I think. Gee, that's not a place to stand, Glenn. Coming hammering across the top of Skyline there. Now, is this going to call out a pace car? Officials suggesting that he hop over the fence. Oh, dear. Ten laps to go. Something had drift under the car there, or is that just uh, rubber and debris? No, no, it looks from here very much like he's got some kind of... Uh, tail shaft dragging there or a uni on the ground now difficult to tell at this distance disappointed peter jackson crew watching the monitor in the garage then switches the lights off no, oh, this is interesting this oh boy how are they going to call out a pace car to get this thing off the track i would think not <laughs> so the larry perkins the garage would be hoping not seaton was in position five boy it's been a disappointing day for the fords dick johnson his car written off 18, continuing on, battered and bruised. Now Seaton's out of the show. And listen to the crowd exhorting Perkins they, to win. They want him to do the thing as a privateer to the uh, big money teams. And he's been looking like he could do it all week. He certainly dominated early practice. He dominated the shootout. He was on pole and he's run strong all day with a reasonable buffer with only 11 laps to go. 24 seconds on the last split. So Richards has made up two seconds, but there's an awful lot of ground to make up with the laps running now. There's the Peter Jackson car sitting at the uh, end of Skyline. There's no doubt uh, 
Tim Schenk has had a look at this, but word from race controllers, there will be no pace car sent out to remove that car. Well, he's not on the racing line, but it could be argued that any car on that part of the mountain is in a dangerous position, regardless of the racing sure. line. With a full field of 55 cars, I'd agree with the argument, but the way the field's been depleted and with just uh, 10 laps to go, I think if I were Tim Schenk, I'd be prepared to take the risk and not put the pace car out. Yeah, it'd be a pity to spoil oh, such a the slower race. cars here. Perkins out on the, the damper part of the track, pushing his way past the slower cars. Gee, if these guys haven't had it hard enough today already without having to get their way through. There's Greg Hansford, Curl, one of his chief mechanics. These guys have worked very hard, small operation. Perkins, hands on, team manager does most of the work himself. Prepares the car, builds the engines. Less than 10 laps to go now. Word from the pits with the uh, Seaton car is that it was a tail shaft failure. Let's get back to the pit area now. Alan Grice is with Fred Gibson. Fred, uh, Jim had a spin up there, but you said there was a car spun in front of him. Yeah, car spun in front of him, Alan. He lost about 10 seconds. We were 16 seconds behind out of the pits, and he said you wouldn't believe it. Your guy spun in front of him. You've gone around with him virtually. So we're 24 seconds behind now. So I suppose, unless Larry makes a blue, now he's got it for the year. Yeah, it's looking that way. Would you, would you have been happier with the greasy condition and the car spinning and all that sort of thing, maybe with those grooved uh, tyres on? Yeah, I know you're going to say something about that, Alan, because you said they're going to put grooved slicks on it. Jim said the track's quite dry, actually. We were getting ready to put the grooved slicks on, but the way the track is at the top and the heat in the uh, tyres got it down the slicks, prefer to stay out the slicks. Yeah, thanks very much, Fred. Okay, Alan. Thanks, Alan Grice. Jim Richards continues on his way. Very clear dry line there. It's quite a tragedy really for Richo, isn't it, to have a, a moment where he had to take evasive action when he's only 16 seconds behind. He's 25 seconds in arrears now. That'll uh, boy uh, Perkins up. He's uh, got the lights on, he's blood up, and he's got the hammer down. The crowd's behind him. He's certainly looking the goods at the moment. I'd hate to put the buckles on him by, uh, by uh, giving him the race before he's actually won it, but he's looking like the money. But Richo hasn't given up yet. He, uh, oh, he look at this. two seconds and that slow. Look how slow he's going here. Oh, gee, he got held up very, very badly by that two-litre car. Mark Scaife shows his disgust. He couldn't believe that. Richards was right off the gas. Oh, look, he's still being held up through here. Have we got a, a, a yellow flag situation? Or is that just the difficulty? Car up there. No, it didn't look like it. Richards back to speed. I can't believe it if he was held up that badly across the top. I'm just going to say on the previous lap, he was two seconds quicker than Perkins, but uh, he won't have, done the same, won't have achieved that this time round. Well, I guess Richards would have been mindful that there is only a dry line here. He couldn't really stray off onto the, uh, the, the uh, wet part of the track, but we had a report from race control there were yellow flags out there, so Richards would have had to yeah, hold formation through the yellow flag area. They'd be out for the Seaton car, which is stuck, of course, at the top of Skyline. Well, that's interesting. If all the cars have got to hold station through that yellow flag area, that may fall against Larry, too, if he gets held up on a few occasions. Eight laps to go. We're going down to the wire, folks. Jimmy Richards and Larry Perkins, two of the most experienced drivers in the country. And this is a clean fight to the finish. Comes out of the bottom turn. The long pit straight. We had a topsy-turvy race, but all week it's been Perkins and uh, Greg Hansford head-to-head -head against uh, Mark Scaife and uh, Jimmy Richards. And you know, it's very rare that you'll see a race like this over this sort of distance where both cars have run literally like clockwork. I can't think of a problem that Larry Perkins has had. Not at all. Certainly full marks to the win to uh, Freddie Gibson's team. And what it might do, it might silence a few of the knockers who refer to these cars as low-tech returns to Jurassic Park. These are very high-tech motor vehicles. Very expensive, too. Well, he's on his way up the mountain. Let's go back to Alan Grice with Mark Scaife, who did such a fine stint today. Mark, uh, you're in a position to win, but you almost need a mistake from Larry, I think, or some funny circumstance. Yeah, you know, that's, that's what happens in the race. Obviously, Jimmy had a little bit of bad luck a minute ago, and that's the game, isn't it? You know, you know what it's like. And at this time now, you need a little mistake from LP or the heavens to open for us to be there. Yeah, but it's still a long way home, really. I mean, when you're sitting in the car and there's only these few laps to go, it's still a long way home, isn't it? Sure is. Like, when you're standing here like this, it doesn't seem a long way, but when you're in the car, it's a bloody long way. Would you think he'd be starting to hear the uh, gearbox noises or the diff noises just yet, or do you think he's still a bit busy? You know the ones, Grisey. <laughs> I think we've both had them. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Thanks, uh, Alan. Wayne Gardner 
hasn't he done a fabulous job today along with uh, Bradley Jones? Oh, look at this car, 35 off on the grass, trying to pick their way through the slower traffic. That's the Warren Johnson Des Hall car. It's a tough call for these guys, it's very hard, they want to stay on that nice dry line. They can't really stray that far from it, so... Well, that's where Larry wants to stay. He's threading the needle at this stage in the race as he brings them across the line again. 21.5 for Perkins, so the track getting drier and obviously faster. Listen to the crowd. I think <laughs> we're going Perkins, to have... Mr. Popular at Mount Panorama. I think we're going to have some uh, happy scenes at the presentation uh, later today. I was mentioning that, that uh, Wayne Gardner has done a fabulous job. We brought you the pictures courtesy of DuPont Car Paints in the Telecom Mobile Net Commodore. Wayne running in third spot. And his co-driver, of course, Bradley Jones, has done an excellent job as well. Their other car went out when Wynn Percy uh, crash tested it into the uh, guardrail at the end of the straight. Well, there's Wayne. He's been controlled, he's been consistent. He's copped so much heat from the press over this last season. Uh, the epithet Captain Chaos, I don't think, pleased him no. uh, at all, but he's been uh, a model of consistency and the champion we all know him to be today, the third, is well deserved. Captain Colossus. <laughs> Captain Charisma. <laughs> Just imagine the competitive fire that burns inside this guy. To be a world champion on a 500cc motorcycle, you're not short of bravery. Listen to the crowd again. Today. They've been cheering every lap down here at Mount Panorama for Larry Perkins and the Castro Commodore. Well, obviously, the drizzle continuing. The windscreen wiper's on, but the track still dry. The gap. Down to three... Oh, sorry, three seconds came off at that lap. It's down to 21 seconds now. But, uh, I'm afraid that Jimmy Richards is running out of time, I think, to, uh, to catch Larry Perkins. I think Larry would be pretty mindful, too. He'd be being shown the gap, and he'd be aware of it through his... Uh, electronic dashboard system so i think from now on larry if there is no problem he'll be just trying to hold this together keep a comfortable buffer like jack brabham used to always say try and win at the slowest possible speed <laughs> one having difficulty coming into uh, pit lane the 99 car dennis crib and steve crab in the corolla but here's perkins showing his star showing the way home Lights on and thrilling the fans as we draw to the close of the great race, the Tui's 1000. A kid from Kawaji, they called him. A boy who came from the bush and all the way to Formula One. And not only is it a Commodore, which uh, pleases the Holden fans, but it's a Holden-powered Commodore, not a Chevy-powered <laughs> Commodore. As I said earlier in the day, there'd be a few of these uh, Chevy-powered Holden teams scratching their heads, wondering why they've invested so much in the American racing technology. Here's Perkins with the homegrown V8, as he said. It's made only 20 kilometres from his factory in Moorabbin in Melbourne. I think if he can keep it on the road and pick this one up, there will be no repeat of the unpleasantness of last year at the presentation ceremony. Six laps remain in the Tui's 1000. Larry Perkins continues to lead in car number 11. 20 and a bit seconds clear of uh, Jimmy Richards in the number one Winfield Commodore. And in third place, Wayne Gardner in the Telecom Mobile Net Commodore. So it looks like we're set for a Commodore 123 four and five with uh, Jeff Brabham in car number 35 back there in sixth spot at the moment well that time around the gap remained the same between Larry Perkins and Jim Richards so there's something that always affects the lap times around here too is these slower cars you've only got to get boxed in and you lose three seconds so it's very hard to monitor who's doing which you're only got to get one bad lap and uh, knocks, knocks your times uh, right down to the floor Larry Perkins, we count down the laps. Australia's great race, and he leads it by 20 seconds. Can he win it? We'll be back in just a moment. Larry Perkins, four laps and one turn still to run. Lap 155 of 161, six hours, 19 minutes. Doesn't need much commentary along pit straight, let me tell you. We won't talk, just listen to the crowd. 